Well, hey guys, and welcome back. As you may already know, these are this is part of a video series designed to help you prepare for the BCBA exam. In this series, we're talking about differential reinforcement. Differential reinforcement simply means you're reinforcing some responses, but not all responses. All responses. So simple example, if I said, what color is it? I would be taking purple. I would reinforce purple and no other responses. For this one, I'd be reinforcing blue and no other responses. If I told you to clap your hands and you touch your head, I wouldn't reinforce it. If I said clap your hands and you clap your hands, I would reinforce it. There are five different types of reinforcement, differential reinforcement. There's differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior, an incompatible behavior, other behavior, high rates of behavior and low rates of behavior. Each one of them has a specific purpose and a specific reason for using it. In this video, we're gonna talk about differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior. Stay tuned. Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna to talk about differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. Well, that is exactly what it says it is. It's when you're putting one behavior on extinction, you're getting rid of one behavior that you don't wanna see, and you're replacing it with another behavior, but it's a behavior that the person cannot do at the same time as the behavior you're getting rid of. Okay, I have a secret for you, so I want you to lean in really carefully. Differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior is almost always pretty much the same thing as differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior. Well, here's why. In reality, anytime you're getting rid of a behavior, you always wanna teach a child a functionally equivalent replacement to get what they want. It's very, very uncommon when you want to reduce a behavior and you're not gonna give a child another way to get that behavior. The only time in which that would possibly be the case is if you're actually reinforcing the opposite of a behavior. So for example, if a child is supposed to be sitting down in a classroom and they're getting out of their seat and you tell them to sit down, that's differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior because the reality is that the child can't be sitting and standing at the same time. And there really is maybe no alternative appropriate behavior for being out of their seat in the classroom. So there are times in which you're going to reinforce the opposite of the behavior, but the majority of the time when you're using differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior, it really is just DRA. And the only real difference is that whether or not the child could technically do the two behaviors at once, I honestly think is kind of silly to have these two different terms, but we're going to go over some examples of it anyway. So let's look at an example of a DRI. So we're going to talk about Brian. So Brian frequently engages in skin picking, right? So this is a behavior that we really don't want to see. So we have to make sure we can stop Brian from doing this. So let's just say, so if we're using differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior to stop Brian from picking, if we see him picking his, spin, his skin, we're going to give him something else to do that he can't do at the same time as picking his skin. So it maybe is going to be a fidget spinner. Now, technically, DRI could be anything that Brian would be doing um, that he couldn't do at the same time. So if he told Brian, touch his head. Well, that's technically an example of DRI because he can't actually pick his skin and touch his head. But frankly, that's pretty stupid. I mean, you wouldn't really do that, right? The whole point is you always want to try to give a kid another way to get what they're looking for, which is why I say DRI and DRA is in practical terms is pretty similar. So let's just say, you know, he's doing this because he needs something to do with his hands. We'll give him a fidget spinner, you know, teach him to go like this, teach him to maybe rub his hands together, something that's safer for him, something that's not harmful for him. That's what DRI is. So let's look at another example. Let's just say that Beverly frequently bites her therapist and a functional behavior assessment is determined that it's reinforced by positive reinforcement. Well, let's figure out a way that Beverly can't do that. So we give Beverly wearable jewelry, like a chew stick to wear around her, um, around her neck, a necklace, and that's in her mouth. Well, then she can't bite the therapist and she can't bite the chew stick at the same time. So that's an example of differential reinforcement. So, Again, that is technically also DRA because the function is the same, but because she can't do it at the same time, it's considered to be a DRI. So many, many times, if DRI is done correctly, you will be providing a child with an alternative behavior that makes sense. Again, you know, technically you could put duct tape on Beverly's mouth and that's differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior too, but it's also likely to wind you up in jail. So, 
you know, there's the, there's the actual textbook definition, and then there's what it looks like in real terms. And then the last example is, again, like I said, if you know, you're standing up and someone tells you to sit down, and then they say, hey, great job for sitting down. That's differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. This is really the only time in which it doesn't make sense to teach an alternative behavior that's incompatible is really when you're trying to teach the opposite of a behavior. So for example, if you know a child is sitting in a movie theater and they're screaming and yelling on the top of their lungs and making noise, and you tell them to have a quiet mouth, that's DRI, differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. You are then reinforcing the opposite of what the child's doing. And they can't do both opposite things at the exact same time. So it's differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior. But the reality of it is, is that most times when you're doing differential reinforcement of an of, um, alternative behavior or differential reinforcement, it's going to be incompatible. So many times a DRA is actually a DRI and many times a DRI is actually a DRA in practical experience. So, you know, when you're taking your, your BCB exam, you want to make sure that if the two behaviors can't be done at the same time, then you're calling it a DRI, even if it's functionally equivalent, because many times with the DRI, it is functionally equivalent. And yes, that does make it a DRA. Again, I didn't come up with these terms, but I hope that helps you understand them. I, you know, make, I'm going to make be making more videos just like this one. As I'm studying for my exam, I'm doing my best to help you. If I'm going to be studying all these terms, I definitely want to do more than just pass my exam. I want to help as many people as possible along the way. So I really hope you found this video helpful. If you want the show notes, my study notes, I have all of my study notes on my website, hopeeducationservices.com. They're all posted as blog posts. Now, none of these are actually edited. They're my study notes, so please be kind. Don't email me and tell me that the grammar's off. I have actually right now better things to do than to edit the grammar, but they are my study notes, and they're a gift for you for free. You can just go look at them and access them and study from them, and I really hope they help you. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, just drop an email on my website, and I'd be happy to get it answered for you.